Hi, welcome to the Diamond Mounter channel. If you're new to the channel, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton, I'm a jeweler from the UK. I was a professional jeweler for over 20 years there. And then I married a Japanese lady. So now I'm living in Japan, raising our children. So uh, yeah, today's a quick video. I'm basically, I had a, I remembered sort of just little things come to mind about dealing with customers in the past. And some customers, can't blame them, have trouble with these little catches, these little uh, bolt rings. You get on necklaces and uh, they are really fiddly to use so I'm gonna show you what we used to do to help customers out be able to use them they are kind of ugly I don't like them and that is a quite an uncomfortable looking sharp little piece so they're not ideal I would much prefer triggers even on a fine chain I'd rather have a small trigger but people struggle with those as well so anyway you can put if someone like some elderly people like that are feeling in their fingers or a bit arthritis or it's just it's just awkward anyway uh, trying to do something like that behind your the back of your neck uh, obviously some people do them in the front of their neck and then just spin it round but whatever they are awkward to use so you can keep putting bigger ones on but then they just look so terrible so if say for instance you want to use the same bolt ring uh, you can do so, but you can make the other end easier to use. You can make the loop easier to find with the, with the bolt ring. So I'm going to show you a little trick to do that. I just spotted something with this chain. Look, this is no good, right? Because that one, laying the chain flat, uh, bolt ring goes through there. But then this one is turned 90 degrees. This is no good, my friends. Um, I'm surprised a manufacturer would sell them like that. Uh, anyway, right, so we are modifying this. So to take these off, I'm just going to snip it, but you can unsolder them by holding. If you've got a sharp pair of tweezers, I would just have that hold it there. If I could do it, looking through the screen on the camera, um, yeah, I just hold it there and then get it hot and then pull that off gently. They're not difficult to pull off, but heat them up gently because they do melt quite quickly as well. They're only a thin bit of metal. Uh, anyway, right. So I'm going to snip these off, and then I'll show you how I would modify it to make it more usable to a customer who is having problems. Side cutters. Snippy snippy. Snippy snippy. Right now we need some uh, little jump rings. I'm gonna have to make some. I've done a video in the past on making jump rings. I will put a link to it on the screen. Okay, right, some of these bolt rings are soldered closed. This one is open, but sometimes they're closed So, like, as you buy them. So to fit them, you'd have to add an extra little ring. Or if they're gold, you can get away with cutting them open and soldering them closed without damaging the spring, but only in gold, like 18 karat, definitely. Probably nine silver, no way. Uh, if you haven't got a cut one, the way I do it is get your thinnest saw blade. I thread it through. So it's on your, on your saw blade and then just put it against your peg and then cut it, cut it from the inside. And I would recommend doing it not on the end, like on either like three o'clock, nine o'clock kind of positions. Uh, I think that's preferable because if you have to open it again or someone, another jewel has to open it again in the future, they can find that join and cut through that solder join again. So it's relatively still good. So now I'm going to make some rings. I'll show you how I put them on, attach the chain to them, a uh, little bit about positioning and angles and stuff. So it all lays flat and nicely. And then also we're going to do something a bit more clever than just put a big jump ring for a customer to put on there. Alrighty. So uh, yeah, choosing the wire to um, use for the jump rings. Sorry about the cat. Uh, this looks to me, it sound awkward. It's kind of what looks right. This looks to me a little bit thick and it's measuring 0.7 of a mil. I mean, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna pull it down one more hole. But yeah, like I would definitely not go thinner than like half a mil. But 0.7 is looking a bit, a bit thick. So maybe 0.6 is correct. But depends on the chain, depends on the size of the catch. So that's what I mean. I'm sounding awkward. Sort of up to you what looks right. Now, just thinking, if you're working definitely platinum, like really gold as well, um, before you turn it up into jump rings, I would. Give that a polish, nice and easy to polish. Just zip, zip up and down with a usual grease mop and uh, just brightens it up a little bit. It helps you end up with a nice shiny jump ring because it's much easier to get that polished and smooth than it is 
uh, at this stage than it is once it's turned up into little rings. It's far more difficult then. So yeah, I would, to continue, first I would give that polish. Okay, so I need, uh, for behind the bolt ring, I need one kind of smallish, and I need for the, for the other end, one a bit bigger. So I'm just gonna turn these up one at a time. I'm not gonna worry too much about wrapping them around anything. I do that when I'm making a few, but if I'm just making one, I'll just turn it up like that. So that's um, it's a bit big. Yeah, about right. Okay, so there's one. I'll cut this off, and then I'll make my bigger one. So you don't want to go like mad mad with the sizes, but at the same time, you've got to go kind of big because the customer wants to have a noticeable difference in, in its ease of use. So like making one from new yeah i wouldn't choose one that big but it's going to be a lot easier to find uh when they're fiddling about with it in their fingertips and what we're going to do next is that doesn't just join on the end of the chain you could do but what makes it even easier again to find is we're going to put like a little solid bar behind it there and uh that can be pinched in the fingers and then that holds it out a little bit away from the fingertips and then it's much easier to find with that so let me do that so to get this little flat piece, I'm gonna just mill out uh, a bit of round wire, basically. I'm not gonna muck about with any square wire or anything like that. Just uh, if, you, if you've got a little bit of round wire in your scrap pot, little bits of metal, just flatten it and that should be fine. This is what I've lost touch with. I've kind of, I haven't even really thought of doing this since, since I was at work now, like coming up two years ago. Uh, so I'm trying to think how I used to go about doing this. Um, this needs to be finished off, polished and nice, so as long as you've got an extra bit of length I would hold it on the end that you can cut off. And gently, there's a buff stick. Uh, do whatever you've got to do to get it nice and flat. Okay, now what did I do? Uh, either We need to solder that on. I think I used to put solder on the Jump, yeah, put solder on the jump ring first, and that saves you, stops you putting too much on. Uh, solder's neater when you've got the solder on the jump ring going through that little bit of metal. So we're gonna put solder on the jump ring next. So I'll just show you exactly what I do, take it or leave it, but this is just how I work. Uh, I always had to work quickly and then get things done to a really high standard. So just kind of the way I do things has kind of evolved from that pressure over the years. So with a sharp pair of tweezers, hold it over the, the join. Hold it over the join, like that. Parallel pliers, hold it quite high up. Like that. A needle file, anything that's flat. See if you can, uh, without pushing out shape like I just did. Put a little flat on there. You can use a, a sand Paper disc would be really good for this, rubber wheel. But needle file is always faster just for doing that amount of work. I've just got to realign mine now, so I just pushed out of shape. That's why I hold them quite high up in the parallel pliers. It helps stop that happening. Okay, so now I'm holding it over the join again. Now with a, another pair of tweezers. Let me select my next weapon, not those. Just holding it directly opposite, underneath. Ta-da, goes in my little slot in the, in the bench peg. So that's ready for soldering now. Bit of flux, solder it up. Uh, okay, yeah, so you can get away with using a touch more solder than you might normally choose because that solder will flood against the little bar we made. So uh, it's a little bit preferable to have a tiny bit more than usual. I'm talking a tiny bit. Heat up gently so it doesn't ping off as the flux boils. Oop, there you go. I'm gonna put a bit more on. I want this to I want this to be strong on my uh on the little bar. What it is if you put way too much on it kind of balls up on the inside of the jump ring and it's uh it's not the end of the world, you can clean it up, but it's uh it's just a pain and it's you're working in a way of what I described as going backwards and forwards, like you're doing a job, doing it a little bit wrong, and then giving yourself more work at the next step. With the bar, I will hold it by its sides in my parallel pliers, Just gently file it flat on top, put it in that one so it's like parallel to you. 
The jump ring now goes in your tweezers like that. So the solder is at the bottom. Now I can comfortably just hold that in position as I get it hot, just touch it on there. Making sure it's nice and straight, not tilting too much, uh, going on right in the middle. Put my hand against the peg, so I rest in there. There you go, done. Your uh, solder is really important, yeah. Like the pendants I used to work on were quite expensive, so solders <laughs> had to be done really properly. If a chain broke and someone lost something expensive because of your dodgy craftsmanship, you're in big trouble. Um, so yeah, be careful with your solders and make sure everything's neat and good. I double check mine with my loop all the time. Every time I do a solder, I will look close look at it. And um, yeah, okay, so we're at this stage now. So just paper disc the solder, lumpy solder down, went over it with a buff stick. Now that's too long. Let me just cut it so I think it's kind of long, long enough, about there. Uh, so this little tag here acts as a piece for someone to hold on to, so they can hold on to that, and that keeps that clear of their fingers, and then it's much easier to hook that on. What people struggle with, struggle with, they've got a small ring, and to hold on to it, because the chain is all floppy here, they've got to hold on to the actual ring, which means it's kind of just hidden in between their fingers. It's really difficult to get things hooked on. That makes it much easier to find behind your neck a little loop. Now we're going to file this flat as well. Those the corners are sharp here, yeah, that's not going to be very nice. So maybe we don't have to do this with a file, like polishing it might take these off, but just take the sharpness of the corner off a little bit. Next, I'm picking up that smaller jump ring to work with. So I'm just going to open that up a little bit. I know this is open, this bolt ring, but I'm just going to assume it's not like a, a quality one, a quality new gold one. Uh, so hook that on, then obviously close it up. Look closely at what you're doing. Make sure it's closed up nice in line and the join is touching nice and tight. I know it's only a small jump ring, but it's important it's done well. Holding that above the join. Oh, holding that on the join, sorry. And I've got to carefully, carefully put a flat on this, same as we did with the other jump ring. Again, paper disc might be better. Actually, it was in there, isn't it? There you go. Good job. Picking up the chain. Have a close look at the links. They are turned up and soldered one end. Find the end of the link that is soldered, which is this one. If you can't see clearly with your eyes, look with your loop. Again, sharp tweezers holding it over that solder join. Now the other side. Obviously it depends what kind of chain you got, but I'm working with this kind of trace chain. Holding it from the opposite end. Again, I'm actually going to use my needle file for this. A tiny little flat on there that goes through. These chains are all like plated, yeah? They're like this is silver chain, but it's silver plated. I've got to get through that so I won't have trouble with the solder. So I'm going to put a little flat on there. Again, holding it over the join. You need another pair. Sharp tweezers are quite essential, I think. I'm pinching it below, below that. I did this in a previous video. I can't remember what that video was about. Uh, so then that's being held like, in position like, with a chain little link sticking up with the flat on top. It's quite strong. It's not flapping about. So I will now, I just put, put that there. If it doesn't stand up, you can, you got any of these spring tweezers, sometimes you can pinch them on the back and just sat them there, but a bit of flux. I'm going to put, I mean, you can put solder on this ring and then solder it to that, but you do it, it ends up neater if you put solder on the link and then flood that solder to the piece. It just helps with the correct amount of solder you're putting on. I would recommend putting flux down the chain here, because these chains are, as far as I'm aware, always plated, like always plated. The gold, 18 karat gold plated, 18 karat silver plated silver. Uh, they've got it really because it helps maintain the shine. Without that they kind of tarnish slowly slowly. Touch a little bit of solder on top. 
again, borderline a little bit too much, but that's preferable than not enough. Let that flood on. Now picking up my small ring with the bolt ring attached, holding it with tweezers directly underneath the, uh, the join, so the flat I put on it is right on the top. That goes, that goes in the, in the slot. Just realized I wasn't wearing my microphone, sorry. Um, now I, I recommend fluxing the whole thing. This is silver, uh, so it's more risk to damaging that spring. If this was gold, an extra little ring on the side, you'd have no trouble at all, but this is silver, so don't want to bolt it up. If at all possible. Get a bit of heat on there. I need a bit more flux than that on that top. There we go. I'll take the weight of the chain <clears throat> of this one. Like, try to hold it so there's no slack hanging down. It just causes a problem. And now that's in that position, yeah, on my tweezers. Can you see that chain running down there? I'm just holding it there, not pulling it so tight. It's knocking that out of position. And now I can get that hot and I can just touch it on and solder that on nicely. Okay, we got it. Have a look at your work. Is it on straight? Is it on wonky? Is it all central? It should be, should be in a good position and then soldered on properly as well. And does my spring still work? Yes, it does. We got away with it. Well done. There you go, as it's soldered. Okay, so now I'm gonna do basically exactly the same. Put solder on that end on the chain and then hold that exactly the same way in the tweezers and then solder it on. So that's how I attach the ends. So I'll just go ahead and do that. There you go, there it is, fresh off the soldering block. I can remember now the last time I was featured a chain on the channel I was talking about extending it like putting a jump ring further down in the chain so um, yeah a few of these things I may have already covered in that video if I didn't mention in the last video I really should have done it's quite important because uh, the plating on these chains yeah it's a bit of a bit of a liability you've got to be careful and work work around it um, the acid soaking that chain in the acid can damage the plating make it go kind of dull you'll never polish it up as nice as it is like that uh, it's um, quite important. Do it up and then only have the bit that you've soldered in the acid. Uh, should be, the staining should be kept to a minimum if you fluxed up the chain near where you're doing the actual soldering. Silver is even less forgiving than gold. I'm gonna just dangle that in the acid. Hopefully it doesn't go too dull. Try it and have a look. I've done quite well looking after that plating. You can see this is all nice and shiny, bolt ring still nice and shiny. Only really that link that was soldered on, the one behind it, is still got its plating on in good condition. So well worth fluxing down the chain away from, well, wherever you're soldering, just flux it all over basically. Looks after the plating. Because uh, when that plating goes, polishing it back, you'll, you'll never get it as bright and shiny as that. So it's, uh, it's quite important to look after it best you can. I'd like to double check. Have a look at it from the side if you need to, if it's slightly bent, like give it a tweak, you're allowed to do that. Just get it nice and flat. Everything should be straight and in line. Uh, if there's any like, kind of lumps on solder joins, get a rubber wheel, like just touch those up. And then it should be quite easy to polish. There you go, there's my finished tag. Now you can see, if this was a quality item, I was finishing properly. If you look there, there's a bit of a dull patch. I would be going back to the polishing motor to fix that. Uh, in white gold, obviously, he's going to need rhodium plating. Again, rhodium plating, I would only plate the bit you need, you've worked on, just this area. If you start plating up the chain, like there to there, it might look different to the rest of it. The customer notices that. It's a uh, trouble because it's very difficult to, well, it's kind of impossible, really, to correct that. So, yeah, be careful and uh, have a close look. Look at what you're doing. Make sure it's all finished nicely. Uh, everything should be straight. 
that's a piece which can now be held onto all the way here much much easier to to do and you didn't got the same bolt ring i mean you may have put a bigger ring on there as well depends how severe the problem was for the customer but fixing this end rather than this end is sometimes a possibility so there you go uh sometimes customers are like i can't do it i need a bigger catch i need a bigger catch like maybe they do need a bigger catch but it's not the it's not the whole story sometimes it's being able to hold the other piece in position now that is much much easier to hold hold really steadily and hold strong let me try it uh, i'm not someone who practices this kind of thing at all oh, there you go did it straight away <laughs> there you go easy does it suit me <laughs> forgot to mention this tag is also a great opportunity for hallmarking so if you're making something new and you want this kind of tag on there because i know when you buy these chains they come with a it's like the chain manufacturers save money by putting a really small ring on there so maybe an idea to to have this kind of tag there anyway that solid bar is a great place for hallmarks uh maybe even some personalized engraving i don't know the options there because you've got this little bar there so uh it's handy for obviously improving its uh improving someone's ability to actually put it on and take it off uh, also it's a great place for a hallmark to go uh, i want to do a few more videos like this these are kind of just like the day-to-day -day little jobs you get for customers and this kind of thing is exactly what my boss used to like promise to people for lunchtime to be ready by lunchtime and uh you already quite often already doing a job that he's already promised someone else to do for lunchtime like uh, sizing a ring or whatever so I always it's really common I always put under that kind of pressure to finish things quickly and they had to be done to a high standard so that's why i've ended up with these kind of methods of exact ways to hold tweezers and do that and like i've shown in the video so that's that's my way i developed over the years to actually get things done quickly and to a high quality with little results because you know if if you have a problem with a solder join and you've got to go back a step and do it it wastes so much time so it's important to be able to do it correct first time uh, so that's how i do it and working for people that train you up to a high level that's great but it's the customers you are essentially working for and the type of customer you have really affects your your skill level and your ability as a jeweler the customers where i worked living in one of the wealthiest areas in london i mean they come they're wearing the most expensive jewelry uh they come to collect their jewelry driving a brand new like top of the range car they know about quality they go on holidays the most expensive holidays in the best restaurants uh the best ho uh, hotels uh, they they know about quality so if they if they look at something you've done it's a bit wonky a bit dodgy or a solder line showing they're going to let you know about it they won't accept it so i think i, I should uh give uh credit to the customers more than the people actually training me up as a jeweler because they're the ones that really uh, made it essential for me to step my game up and, and become a good jeweler so i'm happy to be able to show what, exactly what i do on the videos take it or leave it but if you want to work to go directly to a high quality finish then do things the way i did it because it's tried and tested over years right anyway patrons tell what's really nice here the feeling of gratitude like starting this patron account and then people like signing up and give me money once a month it was a small amount five one pound five pound or ten pound ten pounds the maximum i, I asked for, for for a month and uh just every, like almost every day now i'm getting a new patron it's really nice i've got this feeling of gratitude i just walk about feeling grateful it's a really nice feeling and i'm sure if you're watching this you own a computer you're probably in, a, in your house that you rent or own and surrounded by family or loved ones there's a lot to be grateful for in life so if you can just take a moment just think about what you're grateful for it's a nice feeling like opposite of jealousy and and hate and envy and stuff like that's a really terrible way to live your life if you can concentrate on things you're grateful for you'll be a much happier person and very likely steer your life in a positive direction so with that these people stirring my life in a positive direction i feel very very grateful uh diane mater and d o mahoney two new patrons i got yesterday thank you very much guys i really really appreciate that and uh, i'm working hard to give you more like <laughs> more more uh Kind of content and uh better value as much as i can so yeah i really appreciate that thank you very much and uh i will leave it there as i always talk too much at the end of my videos thank you if you're new to the channel why not click like subscribe share the video uh there's a link to the patreon account if you're interested in becoming a patron and supporting me do more uh yeah okay see you next time bye